The Mount Sinai Otolaryngology Surgical Video Series presents Radial Forearm Free Flap. This procedure is performed by our head and neck oncologic surgeons for reconstruction of extensive ablative defects. This video is edited by Zachary Schwamm. This is a patient with a recurrent tongue cancer with a relatively large ablative defect in need of reconstruction. A preoperative Allen's test confirmed adequate ulnar collateral circulation. Here we have a left or non-dominant hand with the skin paddle and proximal incision marked out. A red tourniquet with sufficient padding underneath sits on the proximal arm and is set to 250 millimeters of mercury or 100 millimeters of mercury above their systolic blood pressure. We set a timer for 60 minutes. The tourniquet will allow for largely bloodless surgery. To exsanguinate the hand and forearm of blood, an SMAR wrap is applied from distal to proximal before the tourniquet is inflated. The hand is kept in a somewhat supinated position by a blue towel and white gauze. The incision is made on the proximal forearm with a scalpel and extended into the radial aspect of the skin paddle. The radial aspect of the proximal forearm skin flap is elevated with a knife. The plane of dissection is superficial to branches of the cephalic vein which comes into view. The skin and soft tissue elevation continues in the same plane exposing more of the cephalic vein. The brachioradialis muscle comes into view and is also the deep limit of this part of the dissection. The skin incision is carried distally into the wrist. The cephalic vein is further skeletonized and branches of it are clipped and cut. The brachioradialis muscle is further skeletonized from distal to proximal. The V of the two tendinous insertions is seen. The cephalic vein is further skeletonized on its ulnar aspect, cutting down to the level of the brachioradialis muscle belly. The cephalic vein is further isolated circumferentially with a knife. More branches off the cephalic are clipped and cut. The muscle belly of the brachioradialis is then retracted in a radial direction and the fascial attachments cut with a knife. This is where the main pedicle is expected to be. The brachioradialis tendon is retracted distally and underneath the radial nerve comes into view. It is labeled here. The fascia medial to the radial nerve is dissected out and cut. A similar plane of dissection is carried distally into the wrist. The radial nerve is traced out and isolated. The skin incision is then taken across the distal aspect of the skin paddle. The two perpendicular lines mark the anticipated location of the pedicle. The ulnar aspect of the skin paddle is also incised down to the depth of the fascia covering the flexor carpi radialis or FCR. This labeled diagram shows the vascular pedicle consisting of the radial artery and its two venae traveling between the brachioradialis and the FCR. The cephalic vein runs superficially on the brachioradialis and the radial nerve runs between its two tendinous heads. Skin and soft tissue are elevated off the ulnar aspect of the forearm with the depth being the FCR. The palmaris tendon is seen medial to the FCR. This label diagram shows the important anatomical relationships thus far. In the more proximal forearm, we again see the retracted skin and soft tissue flaps, the vascular pedicle running between the FCR and the brachioradialis, and the cephalic vein superficial to the brachioradialis. This walkthrough shows the same anatomy. The skin flaps are retracted, the cephalic vein immediately seen, the brachioradialis muscle belly pointed out, followed by the pedicle, the radial nerve, which pierces the two brachioradialis tendinous heads, and goes into the wrist to provide sensation to the dorsal hand. The brachioradialis and FCR tendons are pointed out.
The fascia surrounding the pedicle is then incised first on its radial aspect and then on its ulnar aspect while the FCR tendon is retracted. The distal aspect of the pedicle is then identified by cutting the soft tissue over the hatched lines. We then see the radial artery and its venae. The pedicle is sequentially clipped and cut distally. Two clips are placed on each side of the artery. The pedicle is then further isolated by lysing its fascial attachments. Small perforators are seen emanating from the radial artery through the brachioradialis and eventually into the radius if one were to take an osteocutaneous free flap. The deep side of the flap and pedicle are released from the underlying tissue working distal to proximal. Vessels are clipped and cut. As one goes proximally, a venous plexus is encountered. Our cephalic vein and pedicle, which includes the radial artery and its two venae, can clearly be seen. This venous plexus is dissected out. Unnecessary branches are sequentially clipped and cut. Next, the radial artery is traced proximally until the level of the radial recurrent artery. This marks the proximal aspect of the arterial dissection. The tourniquet is then let down, the flap allowed to perfuse for a few minutes, and hemostasis on the flap achieved with clips and bipolar cautery. The flap in its entirety can now be seen. The skin petal will reconstruct the soft tissue defect in the tongue, and the vessels will be anastomosed or recipient vessels in the neck. The proximal vessels are then sequentially clipped and ligated, and ischemia time begins. After the flap is removed, a soft tissue defect remains in the arm. This is covered with a split thickness skin graft which is pie crusted to prevent accumulation of blood underneath. The proximal incision is closed with vicryl and monocryl suture and a Jackson Pratt drain is placed. A wound vac is placed on the skin graft site and a splint placed around the donor site for one week.